How you doing, YouTube? Matt, Massive Beer Reviews. Back in the review. A little bit of Saucony Creek action. It's been so long since I've done a Saucony Creek beer in the form of their Unicorns Driving Army Tanks. Uh, this is their version of a New England style IPA. Uh, like I said, I have not done a Saucony Creek beer in quite some time. I moved um, to Jersey, uh, but even before that, it was a while. Um, I just... I see their stuff in the shelves, and I reviewed a bunch of their stuff, so I'm not a big person to go back and revisit a lot of stuff. But it, it, even so, um, uh, the stuff that I did review from them, it was kind of very old schoolish stuff. Um, a lot of their IPAs uh, skewed old schoolish. Um, you know, their kind of base beers are kind of old schoolish, not in a negative way. Their Maple Mistress is by far and away, I think, my favorite pumpkin beer. It's not a pumpkin beer, it's a butternut squash beer, but I dig it. It's probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, pumpkin-esque kind of beers out there, and I love that so much. Go check out my old review of it. That I should actually do a re-review on. But anyway, regardless, they started doing the canned hazy thing, um, and I saw it, and I was kind of like, oh, okay, I really want to try these. Um, and I was driving home today, and I stopped by a local uh, bottle shop, and lo and behold, they have it. So we're going to review it. See what she's got. Uh, like I said, Sockety Creek independently brewed unicorns driving army tanks, New England style IPA, uh, brewed with Citra, Simcoe, and several mystical hops. Hmm, magical. Uh, government warning stuff there. Over here, um, they talk a bit about the brewery, and it's 7.2 percent alcohol by volume. Like what? Sorry, right. you know it's the Pennsylvania Keystone. A little unicorn in there. It's green. Awesome. Yeah, I. I went to Saucony Creek a couple times. I uh, did a bunch of their beers, but like I said, it, 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 I live closer. Um, oddly enough, I think I'm going to stop there um, in two days. Um, this is a Friday or Thursday. Actually, it's a couple days. Uh, on Sunday, I have to go visit my brother in Harrisburg. I actually pass by. I think I might pop in there and just check them out and see what, they, what they're up to. But uh, it's got like a super kind of aggressive snap, crackle, poppy kind of carbonation. I don't know if you can actually hear that. Um, uh, big, huge cream, and it's like infinitely deep bubble, microscopically tight bubbles, and a very light haziness, and I mean light in color. It's actually a super hazy beer. It's just a little bit lighter than a lot of these kind of New England style IPAs. It doesn't have that kind of cataract yet, just a little bit lighter and yellow as opposed to that deep orange core. Let's see if you can get a nose on her. Yeah, I mean, she smells nice. Um, soft, very, very soft kind of camo vibes married with a nice kind of non-bittering but non-sweet kind of citrus. Definitely leaning the orange realm. And a soft graininess. A uh, soft little malty graininess to it. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Not that impactful of a nose. Let's see what she tastes like. Cheers. That's kind of tasty in a very soft, very crushable way. It actually says in the bottom here, a can crusher. And it kind of makes sense. It's got a soft bitterness that doesn't really rear its head until it's pretty much like 90% down your gullet. Um, very on the back end, you get the soft kind of bitterness. Uh, relatively generic, maybe weed pulling kind of bittering. Very soft. Pseudo water nerdy mouthfeel. It doesn't have that infinite pillowy creaminess to it it's got a nice softness to it there's a little bit of that soft melon honeydew more than anything else um vibe as opposed to uh, i think i said cantaloupe on the nose it's got this honeydew uh kind of melon bright um melon flavor to it with a little bit of that citrus the citrus comes off a little bit not super sweet but semi-sweet all the bittering is that kind of soft slightly pulling weedy kind of greeniness it's tasty not all that impactful but a nice beer a clean beer a well-made beer um definitely a crusher i wish this was lower in abv like i said it's 7.2 percent um i want this beer to be five sub five percent because that's kind of where i've had this kind of impact in some stellar beers if this was 4.8 percent, i would be over the moon gaga for this but since it's up there in that 7.2 range while tasty i think you're just trading a little bit of um, ABVs for not as much of impact, but it's a nice beer. It's a well-made beer, a tasty beer, and honestly, probably one of the better kind of initial kickoff hazies I've had from a brewery that I've typically had like old school kind of love affairs with. You know, Saucony Creek to me is very kind of OG. 
So for them to do this and do this this tasty and do this so nicely and so welcoming and so uh, comforting and so easy um, is uh, is pretty cool to be perfectly honest with you. I know they do a couple different versions, not necessarily of this beer, but uh, or they actually do different versions of this beer, but they do the kind of lactose hazy buried thing too. I'll have to pick some of those up and check it out, but I like it. It's tasty. It's nice. It just lacks a kind of calling card wow factor to kind of get you out of your seat and make you want to trudge down to the brewery and kind of uh, see what else they have. But like I said, I should be shooting by uh, maybe this this weekend. By the time this airs, it'll probably be last weekend. Uh, so yeah, probably gonna check them out anyway. Um, so let's talk about it. Is it one of the better uh, New England style IPAs that I've had as of late? <sighs> it's on the outside looking in just because it, while it's tasty and I like it and I dig it, it kind of lacks a little bit of impact for me. Um, combined that with, there are so many ones that really do do it for me. It just gets itself on the outside of that kind of best of mental um, kind of landing category thing for me. I still dig it. I like it. It's not not going to be. It's more that there's a lot of other ones out there have turned me on more than this one as opposed to this one just not being worthy. Um, value and availability. I think it was like 14 bucks for a four pack. Not too bad. Um, you know, shelfy. You know, something I didn't pick up at a brewery and leave you with if you like what we like this. If you like your kind of chuggable, crushable, New England style IPAs, don't lean too bitter, don't lean too sweet, but are a little bit bitter, are a little bit sweet. Give you the soft kind of fruited vibes along with the soft um, green bittering. It's more of an approachable beer for people that don't want to go too crushable crazy in the kind of hazy realm um so it's tasty it's worth a pickup let's put it this way if you're traveling around and you can stop at the brewery it's not that far from the turnpike in between like 81 and the turnpike and kind of centralish east central pennsylvania or you're in driving the area see these on the shelves definitely worth a pickup uh, especially as a shelf beer uh if you're going to kind of compare it to the you no know, filters of the world the wrenches of the world it's 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 a good beer in us in that category it'd probably be one of the better off the shelf shelfies to be redundant um that i've had as late if you want to call it that so yeah if you like the hazies and you like the chug building worth picking up so there we go another review in the books hopefully you guys enjoyed it down there if you want to talk about it massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff beer massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing hopefully you guys enjoyed the review hopefully enjoying a nice little uh socketing creaker right now and we'll see you next time cheers